back now on America's Forum to continue our debate between Harvard Law School professor and legal analyst Alan Dershowitz and James Zogby, president of the Arab American Institute. Uh, gentlemen, we continue and we thank you for abiding by the minute each we tried to uh, give you and we're keeping the clock on this. Uh, James, we've already heard the name of Golda Meir uh, invoked as Alan did earlier. There, there is another observation that uh, the former prime minister made. Uh, Golda Meir said that um, peace will come when the Arabs love their children more than they hate us, meaning the Jews. How do you respond to that observation from years ago by Golda Meir? Terribly racist. And, and I have to say there's a few quotes by, by uh, uh, Golda Meir that offend me, and the one that Alan quoted is, is, is one of them. Another one she said was, I feel so bad for the other side. Uh, over here we dance, uh, we, make, we make love, we, we enjoy life, and on the other side all they do is just hate. Uh, that is simply not true. That is not the Arab world that I know. It's not the Arab world that people in that region know. And, uh, and yet it is the world that has been projected um, out of racist stereotypes. Arabs are angrier, more violent. They hate us. They don't like our values. They don't want to be anything other than haters of Jews. Frankly, it's, it's, it's frustrating but it, it's stuck. It's what popular culture has projected. And Golda Meir was one of the reasons why popular culture did it. She, she was one of the conveyors of that message. Uh, Arabs love their children. They cry for the loss of their babies. They don't put them in harm's way. Uh, unlike the, the Jewish settlers who move into the heart of Hebron and have their children playing Time's on the street. Time's up, James. Time. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alan Dershowitz, your response. Well, I agree with much of what uh, James said. I hate stereotypes. I hate racism. Uh, I agree that some of the statements made by Israelis uh, and by Arabs have a generalized, overgeneralized. I know many Arabs and Muslims who love their children, who are wonderful people, who would like to make peace. I think James and I, if we sat down at the table, could resolve the Israeli-Palestine conflict in an hour. We both know what the end result will look like, two states for two people, end of the uh, settlements, end of the occupation, security for Israel, all that's true. But I think James has to, has to admit that there are some extremist, uh, Islamicist extremists who use their children. Uh, some mothers who've said they brought up their children to become martyrs. Uh, one mother who was quoted uh, as saying uh, if her child came back alive, she didn't want to talk to him. Uh, there is tragically a subculture, it is a subculture to be sure, uh, of extremism that devalues human life. And I think we would both agree if we can rid both of our societies of extremists and, and stop have rational right there. people sit down and make peace, it would be better and for everybody. Mindful of that, another minute to James Zogby. You want to react to what Alan just said? Well, I, I think he's probably right. Uh, if we sat down together, we might be able to figure out a way to work this out. And I hope someday we'll uh, we'll actually give a, a, a try at it in, in private where we actually can have a conversation. But I've been to the West Bank, and I've been to the settlements, and I've spoken with people in the heart of Hebron, and uh, there are, is, and I think Alan would probably agree with me, I hope he would, that there is an extremist culture there as well that yes. undervalues yes. The, the safety of their children by putting them in harm's way deliberately out of a fanaticism. The problem is that there are pathologies on both sides. My concern is, is that what we're seeing play out today are those pathologies and I can defend neither one, which is why I say there needs to be adult supervision. There needs to be someone to pull the parties apart, force them apart, if you will. Time Stop right there, James. Let, let's get Alan for another minute. Alan, you get to respond to what James had to well, say. Well, I don't, I don't disagree with much James said. I think the United States has tried to play that adult role. I have to give tremendous credit to John Kerry and to President Obama for trying their best to bring the parties together in order to pull them apart. I do think this two-state solution is the only answer. I would hope the United States would continue to play an active role in trying to create a two-state uh, solution. But I do have to go back and say that if rockets, whatever the reason, are being sent at our cities, we have to respond. We have to stop the rockets. And the Hamas has to stop using human shields. There can be no doubt, there are videotapes of it, of Hamas calling for children to go on the roof because they know that Israel has warned that this is a military target. 
that just has to stop. The double war crime of sending rockets from civilians to kill civilians has to stop. And if the world won't stop it, Israel has to stop it. And with that in mind, let's move to our next topic, which really is a continuation of the conversation we're having right now. Uh, James Zogby, when Alan Dershowitz was last on this program with us, the professor described his view of the strategy of Hamas on the air. Let's revisit the remarks of Professor Dershowitz. Hamas loves civilian casualties. I call it the, bed, the dead baby strategy. They are ready to have their babies killed and held up for the news to report so as to give Israel a black eye. Uh, James Ogby, uh, to the heart of the matter there, your response to that observation by Professor Dershowitz. Line I used in a debate with Alan once before, as my sainted mother would say in Arabic, Aib, which is shame on you uh, for saying something like that. Uh, Alan, th that, that line competes with some of Golda Meir's uh, for being a racist caricature. It, it is simply not true. Number one, uh, people were killed in, the, in their sleep. Uh, people were killed watching a World Cup soccer game. There were no instructions, and I don't think that there's any videos. I've seen videos of exactly the opposite, people caught off guard and blown to bits uh, from, from the air. Look, I can agree that no country should tolerate rockets being thrown on them, but no country should also tolerate their land being confiscated, hundreds of their people arrested under administrative detention, settlements being built on stolen property, uh, curfews and collective punishment and houses being demolished by the hundreds and thousands over the last 40 years. Time, the fact is time have to stop you there, James. Let, let me let uh, Alan respond now. Professor Dershowitz. Remember, none of that happened in Gaza. Gaza was free. Gaza was an independent area oh. with no uh, Israelis around it, no uh, controls over uh, access to Gaza. Anything could come into Gaza until... Hamas took over in a coup d'etat, killed many Palestinians, and then started sending rockets into uh, Israel. I can't justify Israel's administrative detention. I wrote an article against it going back to 1970. I can't justify Israel's settlement policy. I've been opposed to that since 1973. I've been in favor of the two-state solution since 1970. But when rockets are fired from densely populated areas and james you and i have both been in gaza there are many many open areas from which rockets can be fired but hamas chooses to fire the rockets from densely populated areas including hospitals and 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 mosques and israel must respond and if the inevitable result is some civilian casualties. That's a tragedy that Israel tries hard to avoid. You Time. cannot Thank accuse you. Israel Thank of deliberately you, Professor. trying to Thank you, Thank you. Time there. Let's move along to another portion of the debate with a couple of minutes remaining. President Obama, in a phone call to Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, says the U.S. is willing to help negotiate a ceasefire now between Israel and Hamas. What role should the United States play in this conflict, and has this administration done enough? Alan, you can respond first. Well, I think the administration has tried its best, and they were very close at some points. And then, unfortunately, uh, I think the Palestinians decided that the BDS movement and other international forums would give them a better deal, and they started backing away from making the kinds of very difficult compromises and sacrifices that are required on both sides. I think the United States should continue. The United States completely and totally supports Israel's efforts at self-defense, doesn't agree with James Zogby, and says that any democracy should be able to respond. When President Obama as a candidate came to stay wrote and saw the rockets, he said, if these rockets were being aimed at my children, I would do everything in my power to stop them, and he expects Israel will do the same. So the United States is 100 percent on Israel's side. So is Great Britain, so is France. This is really one-sided when it comes to the international community. And for James Zogby to say that he can't take sides on this, neutrality in the face of evil is not neutrality and i would hope that james stop zogby you there Th thank you alan Hamas for what it's doing. thank you let's go now to james zogby the final word on this sir i might be guilty of neutrality although i'm not i side with the people against those who are committing these atrocities but alan you're guilty of giving support uh to somebody who that's committing absolutely atrocious immoral acts and that's that's wrong and i i, I feel bad 
uh, that you're in that position and that I have to point it out to you uh, time and again. The fact here is that the United States, uh, as you said, is 100 percent in Israel's corner and therefore ought to recuse itself. This issue ought to go to the United Nations. The very world body right. that created this right. problem A needs really to be neutral able to group. <laughs> Alan, Alan, be quiet, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, as neutral as Congress is, I guess. Um, and, th and therefore, here's the issue. The issue is, is that we, if we're going to be cult holder and cheerleader, we can't be mediator. And it's a problem. And that's when I said adult supervision, because there's nobody here to defend the people and pull these parties apart. And that's why the United Nations ought to be involved. You say the majority of the world is with Israel. It's not. It's the majority of the white Northwest European And world. we will have to stop it there. Gentlemen, we thank you for a spirited debate. James Zogby and Alan Dershowitz on the issues America's Forum will continue following this timeout.